Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Something completely different. I've got a new toy. This is an airbrush compressor kit from Banggood. They sent it to me for review. I've wanted this for some time. And the reason I've wanted this for some time is because I was looking for a way to facilitate my uh, restoration work, especially the cabinet work. When you do restorations, one of the big chunks of the job is the actual cleaning and um, you know rest restoring the physical cabinet or chassis of the radio. And I've found various ways of doing that in the past. I've made up little tools and all that. Usually they involve chopsticks, but I've wanted to make it easier and better. And I thought that this would make my life a lot easier because I want to give it a, a try on probably not what it's intended for, but we'll see how we get along. Stick around. You might find it useful. I don't particularly like to see unboxing videos. So why am I doing one? Well, because we've got the magic of uh, video editing and everything else. And what I really want to show you is this. Ha! How many of you guessed that this is what I was talking about in the last video? This is a, an airbrushing kit. Why would I need this, you might ask, uh, if I'm going to continue with my restoration videos? Or am I changing to something completely different? I'm not changing my hobby. I'm just going to use this as another tool that adds to the uh, ease of doing the restoration of tube radios that I've been doing so far. And I want to show you why and how I plan to use this. When you do uh, tube radio restorations like I do, you always find different ways or new ways of doing things more efficiently, more effectively. So you sort of invent tools, you invent methods, whatever you want to call it. Most of those inventions are not real inventions. You just see somebody doing them and you start using them, make some adjustments. You know what I'm talking about, right? Well, one of the things, one of the problems I've always had is when I get a chassis, there are various things I need to do to it. One of them is obviously to blow dust away. So I've used a full air compressor in the past. I had very bad luck with uh, one particular incident. I blew too hard, or rather the pressure was too high, and I messed up some coils, some of those little fine wires, too much air, too much pressure, and I damaged some of those coils. So repairing that was a problem. Then I thought, well, what about getting a very small compressor? And then another idea came up, which was, you know, airbrush compressors are supposed to be used to paint. You put paint in a little cup and you spray it. Well, I spray stuff on my radios when I'm cleaning them, namely isopropyl alcohol. I dab it with isopropyl alcohol. One of the problems I've got is trying to wash the residue off. And I thought, what about an airbrush compressor using alcohol instead of paint? So I wanted to try that as well. And of course, painting itself. <laughs> I mean, the, this thing is uh, supposed to be used to paint stuff. And the beauty of this is that it's actually something you can paint in a very controlled manner. Small surfaces, small distances, small pieces, and it doesn't sort of spray paint everywhere like you would with the stuff I normally use, which is a spray can. So I got hold of Banggood. I've been a client of Banggood's for, I don't know how long they've been around, but I've bought stuff from them for years and uh, probably a lot more stuff than my wife knows about. They've actually offered to sponsor me in the past. I haven't really taken them up on it. This time I contacted them and asked if they were prepared to send me one of these for me to try out on the channel. They were very kind and they did so. So Banggood, thank you very much for this. I am going to be absolutely frank about what I think about it and whether it meets my expectations. Remember, my expectations are not necessarily becoming a graphic artist. It's something else. So if this doesn't uh, really perform as well as I expect, the problem is mine, not the compressors. So let's get going and see what we've got. This thing came in a kit, which is exactly the way I wanted it. It's all complete. It includes the actual airbrush gun. You've got a hose for the air. There's this little thing, which is great. So you can uh, put it there and, and use it as a holder for your, your airbrush guns. Cable, 220 volts. You get these on 110, 120 as well. One instruction manual, nothing too specific, nothing too detailed. You don't need it. Let me give you a closer look at this. This entire thing is pretty compact and it's exactly what I need for the uh, space that I like to work in. It's a 1.6 horsepower pump rated for 220 to 240 volts mains, which you can get for um, US mains as well. There's, it's 50 Hertz in our case, 1450 RPM, weighs 3.6 kilos, 20 to 23 liters per minute of air coming out of this thing. Now, 
This thing has an auto start and auto stop. The auto start is at three bar and auto stop is at four bar. I am not sure. I'm not too familiar with this sort of thing, so I'm not sure if that's enough. I hope it is. And then you can adjust the working pressure to what you need. But what we've got on here is basically just an on-off switch, a carry handle, and our hose. One side of the hose just connects to here. This particular one already came mounted, which was a good thing. This thing comes off. And when you put it on yourself, you've got to use some insulation, some of that, uh, what is it, PVC tape, whatever it's called. And you've got to make sure this thing is vertical. So somebody was kind enough to do this for me. It comes as part of the kit ready, uh, already mounted. This is the setting for the working pressure, which we will see on here. But um, just before we carry on, this thing comes with it. And this is simply a gun holder. So you put that in there, tighten it, and your airbrushes just fit in there like that, which is pretty neat. There's space for two. I don't know whether I'm going to use two ever, but it's always good to have provision for it. The other side of this connects to here. You can get these uh, quick clamp systems. This is just the way the kit arrived. So I've got nothing extra on here. This is exactly how I got it. Now, I had to figure out how to work it. I've never worked one of these, but it's incredibly simple. Let me show you. I've got this thing plugged in. I haven't adjusted anything here. This thing comes up and down. You pull it up to adjust and you push it down to lock. And I just switch it on. Let's listen to it. So it's obviously hit four bars already. And four bars, if you want to know, is about 58 PSI. I'm just reading the scale on there. I am reading 20, 26 PSI here. And that has got to do with my working pressure. Now, the way this works, if you don't know, like I didn't, when you push this down, air comes out. When you pull it back, paint goes through, okay? So when you push this down, all you get is air. When you push this down and pull back, paint or whatever liquid is that you have in here comes through. The amount that comes through depends on how far back you pull this. Now you can also adjust it. If you find a, a setting that you like, you can push this in to where you want it so that you don't even have to control this. You just pull it all the way back and you've got your setting, okay? Now this is pretty high, but I'm going to show you what we do if we want to set the working pressure higher. I'm going to, I believe this is higher. So I'm going to do this. You see that's going up. That's going up almost. Yeah, it's, it's working at four bars. So I'm working at four bars here, which is maximum pressure. So it uh, starts pumping air out of here. And when it hits three bars, the motor starts again. Now, obviously, because I'm shooting a lot of air out of here, I'm working with a high working pressure, it comes down and starts filling this again very, very quickly. I don't want to work it at this higher pressure. I normally work at about, well, I'm going to work at about 20. So I can just pull this up again, go back. I think that's how it works. There we go. That is just, what is that? Everywhere, I, everything I've read says you should work at about 20 PSI, which is that. Now, what it's going to do is pump up and... Yeah, it's not bad. Now, because I'm using a lot of volume of air, I want a lot of air to come out of here when I'm blowing, if I'm cleaning. This thing's going to be going on most of the time, but it really is not very loud. I mean, if I was airbrushing with a very fine brush and all I'm doing is this, this thing could hold on for a little while and then switch on, but I'm doing this flat out, which means I should probably just up the pressure anyway. If I'm going to blast, I might as well blast. Well, what I think will happen here is when I blast it for air, 
I think that I'm just going to get the right amount of, uh, of concentrated air where I want it so I can blow dust and everything else and cobwebs from specific parts of the radio and not damage anything. Looks promising, looks very promising. What else do they have here? I have not really looked at this much, believe me. There are a few models. Those are the uh, details I've just given you. There's the operating directions, <laughs> for which we don't normally read too much. Oh, of course, let me tell you about this thing. When you compress air that has humidity, it has moisture in it, and you compress it and decompress it, it does tend to create condensate droplets. And what this does, this is the air filter. Obviously, you've got the pressure controller over here in the gauge, but this uh, filter is a moisture filter. So when the, there is liquid in the air and it starts accumulating, it doesn't go into your airbrush, into your system. It accumulates here, then all you need to do is pull this up. I presume you switch it off first. That would be a good idea. And your liquid falls out of here. And when you switch this on again, it's an airtight seal again, and you're ready to go. Well, you know what? I, I like the look of this thing. I like the way this thing sort of sits here. It's small, compact. It's got these rubber. Let me switch this off. It's got these rubber feet, which uh, helps to dampen noise. I'm not too worried about the noise right now. I've been playing with this, and I have my workshop literally. It uh, used to be a study. Now it's a workshop. And... Um, and the reason I changed the name is so my wife doesn't come in here. But it's right next door to a bedroom. And uh, sometimes my wife's asleep and I'm working on here. And this is exactly what happened. When I was trying this out, I did some painting with this, which I found was quite interesting. I painted something right here on this desk with this thing. I didn't spray all over the place. I didn't mess the whole place up. It worked beautifully. And I was using this with a motor coming on with my wife sleeping in the bedroom next door. She didn't wake up. So whatever noise this makes, and it, it makes some, is so low that it doesn't wake up your neighbors or anybody else in the household, which is perfect for me. Perfect. I can use this at my workbench. I don't have to go outside. I don't have to go to the garage. I can use it right here, which is exactly what I wanted to do. So far, so good. Now I want to try some experiments, see if this thing actually works. Rather, show you if this thing actually works, because I know I've tried it. I will start by trying just to blow away dust, which is usually the first thing you do when you get one of these. This is a uh, just a donor chassis. This thing is here for parts. There's no way I'm going to repair it, but it still has some dust. I think we can see some of that there. And these sort of spots behind the uh, connectors is usually where you have a problem. So I've got this thing on about 20 PSI. Maybe I'll give it a bit more pressure. In fact, what I'm going to do is put it on max. See what happens. And it does the job. So this thing with nothing inside here is actually just working as an air compressor, a blower. And most of this dust is actually was already gone, but it's doing the job. I think this is going to work. And I've, um, I was blowing near these coils over here and I don't see the wires being threatened in any way, which is precisely what I feared with. Uh, and in fact, the uh, mishap I had with the, with a proper air compressor, it damaged some of the coils on the underside, so I think this will do the job. Now I'm going to start doing some cleaning on here. Now what I normally do is, I've got some isopropyl alcohol over here. This is one of those that you push down and it bubbles up so you don't waste it, because this stuff does evaporate quite easily. And then I use one of these brushes, natural fiber brushes, and I will wet this and I will start washing away and the problem is that it then remains there. So I've got to get rid of it. And uh, I then take one of these makeup remover 
pads, double it up or cut it, even cut it in half if it's too thick, put it in my adapted chopstick, and then I've got to clean it up, okay? And if I don't clean it up, it just sits there. Now this is the part that I wanted to try with the airbrush. And uh, if I'm honest, that's the main reason why I decided to give this a go. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to fill it with just normal alcohol. This is the uh, cheap stuff. Just put some in there. I also don't know how much it's going to use. You know, whether this thing will go through it with uh, <laughs> too fast. But um, I'm going to try now because I want to see if this works better. So what I expect I have to do is brush it anyway, but spray some alcohol on it and then rinse it off with the alcohol that's being sprayed from here. Let's see if that works. See, getting to the middle of those resistors is sometimes a problem. You've got very little space, and if you want to try and put in this thing, it just won't fit. And this is where just rinsing it off might be the best solution. And it's working. Perfect. Carry on. It's working well. Let's try some here. Ah, I like it. I like it. I think I'm going to have to learn to do this with the left hand because I brush better with the right. This thing is working extremely well, much better than I expected. But the final rinse is something you have to sort of do like this. You've got to put it on its side and then rinse down so that I haven't really cleaned that dirt. But if I do that, the dirty alcohol runs to the bottom. Then you can put some, uh, you know, some tissue paper or something to absorb it. You know what? This is beautiful. This is much, much better than I expected. Much better. You can't really just blow it enough to, uh, to do some cleaning. You have to do the cleaning with a brush. For example, that is particularly stubborn over there. What happens with these is that the dirt sort of gets ingrained into the paint. Oh, run out of alcohol. How can a man work when he runs out of alcohol, eh? A bit more. Now remember, I'm using the cheap stuff on purpose because if I then want to make sure that there's no residue, this alcohol actually leaves a sort of film, then the last run I will do with isopropyl, but I'll be saving the best stuff um, as much as possible. See that? I like it. Okay, well, that is a pleasant surprise. That is a very pleasant surprise. And I think that if I increase the pressure, which I'm going to do now, it's even going to work better. Yeah. In fact, it's if I'm prepared to sacrifice this cheap alcohol, it almost looks like I don't need much rubbing.
Yeah, I sort of still do. I do need to give it a bit of a, a brush. The brush can get anywhere. The brush does get into everything. You can get all these bristles to go into the nooks and crannies between the components. It's um, drying it up, absorbing it, trying to absorb the dirt. That becomes a, a challenge. That's what I normally have problems with. You can sort of work things under the wires and into the legs of the components. But then the fact that you can just do this is fabulous. I think this is great. I think this is really great. I think I've just found my go-to for cleaning uh, chassis. <laughs> okay, but don't forget, this thing is an airbrush. And an airbrush is supposed to paint. So how good is this thing at painting? And what would I paint with this? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to try the simplest, simplest paint job that I can imagine. Here is a tuning condenser. I'm sure you've all seen these. This particular one comes with a cap on there. And I've tried to clean it. I've actually used some uh, wet and dry sandpaper on here. So I think I've got most of the rust off. I would probably first put a uh, anti-rust coat on here, but for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to go straight onto this. So I'm taking, I've taken this off, put that aside, and I want to paint this. Now, what does it entail and how much of my fingers are going to get painted? In other words, how complicated is this going to be? Well, first of all, let me take a trick from one of the guys I saw doing uh, airbrush painting. He sticks a piece of wood to the back so that he can hold it away, from, hold his fingers away from there. I'm going to use some of this press stick. See if that'll work. Just basically I've got a handle now. And the paint that I've got is this stuff. This is really cheap stuff. This is the artist's um, acrylic. It's water-based. So everything is washable just with water. Makes life a lot easier. And the way they tell you to do it is to dilute it. Now I'm going to take some water here. I think the right um, mixture is one to one. So I'm going to drop some water in there. I'm going to do this in the simplest way possible. See if it works. Try and get the same amount of paint in there. Ideally, you should do this mixing uh, in a little something else, <laughs> not inside the cup itself. But as I said, I want to make this as simple as possible to see if I can get away with it. This is an experiment. I think I've got that mixed more or less right. I've dropped the pressure to 20 PSI, I think it is. And let's see. Now, everybody tells you to do thin layers, many layers, but thin. And what I've seen them do is once they've get, got one layer, they just push down here and then you just get air and you dry it. It does dry quite quickly. You know, I've just realized this vibration is making all the filming become a little bit uh, wobbly. So I put the compressor on the floor. It was actually making this whole thing vibrate. I was watching the uh, the piece and not the, the camera. Okay, ready for coat number two. I'm just opening this thing all the way out, practically. It was probably too thick a coat, but what I've got, dry it out. Should probably let it dry a bit more, but I'm going to give it the last one now. Let's see.
There we go. Now I did this really fast on purpose. You know, you shouldn't do it this fast. You should probably do a couple more thin layers, but I wanted to show the result and look at this. <laughs> now I have basically spray painted on my desk and it hasn't really gone out, you know, beyond this little piece of paper that I have here. Obviously, just to make uh, make it uh, just to be safe, I'd probably open the newspaper out. But this has worked beautifully, and um, I could never dream. Oh yeah, I gave it too thick a coat over there. But I could never dream of spray painting this inside my my office or my workshop here. I'd have to go outside. I'd have to put newspapers all over the floor. I'd have to shake a tin can endless times and then I'd be able to spray it and then I have to wait for you know 20 minutes half an hour between coats go back you know it was just too much of a, a bother this thing is fantastic now this was just gray I'm gonna buy a whole set of these and uh, the other thing that I've realized is I think you can blend colors as well so you know if I wanted a darker gray I just get some of the black and I've got some of the black actually just mix the uh, the two together get some water in there or distilled water. And I've actually seen the guys use uh, wind windshield wiper liquid. Now, I'll be quite honest with you. I've never seen something like that in Madeira. <laughs> I don't think, I think uh, uh, Madeira and windshield wipers use water. <laughs> we don't use anything fancy, but I presume there's some sort of lubricant in there. But um, you can use a, just about anything to dilute this. And it seems to work quite well. And the beauty of it now is to clean the brush I think we probably finished the paint here. Oh, there's still quite a lot of paint. Hell, well, that's a surprise. I thought this thing would use a lot more paint or paint a lot more quickly. I'm trying this close up. You know, you've got to really experiment a lot to get accurate with the uh, with the airbrush. There's a whole uh, there's a whole community on there that uh, will give you tips on which guns to use and how to mix this and what blend you should use and what um, combination of paints you can use and how to clean this. You know, I didn't want to go into all that. I take my hat off to those guys. This is, as I said, a separate hobby. I just wanted something that I can use in mine. So what do I think about this little guy? Quite frankly, I love it. It's the right size. It fits in this uh, workbench of mine without a problem. It doesn't make too much noise. It acts as an air blower when I want to blow dust away from the, uh, from the top of the cabinets. It uh, blows in my alcohol to use to clean the cabinets or to rinse parts that I've already cleaned, you know, with the, with the brush. And it paints on small, it paints small items or small objects on a very limited surface. So I don't have to worry about getting this outside and covering all the walls so that uh, I don't get overspray. This thing is very precise. I'm really happy with this and I thank uh, Banggood for sending it to me. I'm sure you're going to be seeing this thing quite a bit in the near future on my restorations because, yeah, once I get uh, a new toy, I do like to use it. Anyway, the product link for this on Banggood's website is in the description below. There are a few other links there. They've got some sales going on at the moment. So um, by all means, click on those links and knock yourself out. Have fun. Thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.